What's up guys, it's the Middle Age Gamer here and today we're playing World of Subways Volume 3, otherwise known as the London Underground Simulator. And we're going to go ahead and start the campaign today. So we're going to go to missions and then we're going to do the briefing which is basically, or basically serves as an introductory tutorial. And it says in this briefing you will learn how to drive a train and how to operate at stations and Instructor Danny will explain everything to you. Let's go ahead and get on into it. Um, the only issue I have with this particular mission is it does not show you how to do the brake test. So in my second video, or the second mission of the campaign, I will be showing you how to do the brake test as well as setting up the uh, back and front of the train properly and uh, also show you how to do it as quickly as possible. So anyways, again, it just says in the briefing you'll learn how to drive a train and how to operate at stations and Instructor Danny will explain everything to you. If you look to your left, you got good old Instructor Danny here with the bald head and the 90's plaid shirt on. And it says, today is our first ride at the Sea stock and we're going to Edgeware Road without passengers then we'll drive back. You should try to stick to the schedule. Um, now let's switch on the tail lights. We gotta wait till he gets in first. And the only problem with this is, um, it says you gotta stick to the schedule on the way back. Well, the problem with that is, you're way past the schedule when you start. So honestly, you don't have to stick to the schedule or stop at every station on the way back. Okay, so we just switched on the tail lights there. And I'm gonna left click right here to close the door. And once you're in the train to sit down, you hit the C button and you hit the C button again to get back up and then if you're in the train sitting down you hold down the shift button to bring up the mouse pointer that way you can click on items so anyways we gotta go to the first car since we just set up the rear with the tail lights and then we're gonna be using this as the front and driving that way so I guess we're going from Hammersmith to Edgeware Road and we'll be coming back to Hammersmith at the end of the briefing mission. Anyways, we have to wait for Danny to get here. As you can tell, I can't open the door. I'm left clicking on that. It doesn't open until he gets here. So the only problem with this mission is you are at Danny's mercy at the beginning. Come on, Danny boy, let's go. With your 90s plaid shirt on. Alright, still going to be in my way I'm sure. So when you get on you hit C on the keyboard to go ahead and sit down and it's going to want us to switch on the train by operating the track uh, traction brake controller which is this lever to the left there that I'm looking at and we're going to go ahead and hit the up button to put it in emergency which helps us get power. We're going to go over to the right board over here and turn on the ventilation, the headlights and uh, des dashboard lights and destination light and then we're also going to turn on the cab lights and right now you can see the cab lights are on both right there however it wants us just to have the cab light on the right hand side for whatever reason whenever I play missions though I make sure it's on both on the right hand board here we're going to go ahead and turn on the heating for the passengers as well as the passenger lights and it says we're all set to go so we're going to go ahead and close this door and hit the tab button Oop. Oh, it wants to bring us the uh, the selector switches on the right, right here. And let me see if I can zoom in real quick. Right now, it's in the off position. We want to go ahead and bring it to the four position by hitting page up. So page up is going to move this down, and page down moves it up. I know it's kind of backwards, but that's how the game is. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit tab to bring that down, and then I'm gonna bring this up. And you can see the brake pressure is rising right here. And wait till it gets to about 80 and we can go ahead and, and pull forward. Again, it doesn't show us how to do the brake test, which is right over here. And on the next video, I'll show you guys how to do that. All right, so we're good to go. Unfortunately, we're at a red light, as you can see up there. So if we pass that red light, we are going to fail the mission. Um, but that train that just left, we're basically going to be following it the entire way and I found out that if you go full speed or the the max speed that you can go then you're gonna catch up to that train very quickly to the point where you're gonna be stopping at every other light and so I'm gonna hit the number two button on the keyboard 
And it's going to bring up the route monitor. You can also bring up the time and the station monitor if you want with one and three. So on the way back or the way here to uh, Edgeware Road, which is where we're going now, um, we're going to be taking our time because, again, we don't want to hit the red lights all the way through. I'm going to bring it up to about 20. And even then, I'm still going to hit a few red lights. As you see, it goes from green to yellow to red right here. And basically waiting for the train in front of us to get out of the station before we get the green light. And so that's why I'm not going to be doing 40 miles per hour from place to place because we'll be stuck here talking about absolutely nothing for half the time. And so on the switch here to the left, we basically have three forwards, which is shunt, series, and parallel. Basically slow, medium, and fast. And then anything below that is going to be braking. And you just want to make sure not to brake too hard. So as you can see, we're on a shunt right now, which is kind of the slowest you can go moving forward. And when you hit down, it'll pretty much just cruise pretty close to the speed you have it. Let's go ahead and get up to about 15, 20 here. So, so far I've been playing this game, like it quite a bit, um, just got it in from the Royal Mail, so I had to get it from the UK, whereas Volumes 1 actually came from the US, and I also have Volume 2. I haven't played Volume 2 as of yet, I did play a little bit of Volume 1, and uh, Volume 3 is by far better, it at least has the mission, so you have something to accomplish, whereas Volume 1, you're just selecting a route that you want to go and uh, meeting the timetable on that route. A few other small differences and uh, honestly this volume 3 the minor differences definitely help out and at least there's actually a tutorial even though this tutorial doesn't show you everything you at least have a place to start whereas volume 1 it's just you're going on the route good luck we'll tell you what you do wrong at the end In fact, on volume one, bringing up that route monitor to see how fast you're going is a deduction. So uh, I'm not sure how you would obey the speed limits without looking at the speed limit you're going, unless I guess you're just looking down the entire time, which it's kind of hard to focus on what's coming up if you're looking down like this. Another red light, um, this is going to be a pretty common thing through this video. And again, on my next video, I will be showing you how to do the brake test, set up the train properly, and I'll show you how to set everything up really, really quickly as opposed to the briefing, because the briefing wants you to do things in a certain order, whereas when I set up the train, I basically just go down the line of switches, um, do a couple things over there to the right, do the brake test, and then we're off. So if you've need to feel free to look at uh, mission number two which is called stand by man and that will be on YouTube shortly as well all right any day now still stuck at this red light this is a quite a long station or quite a long section to the next light so I was waiting for that train to pass it before we move on There we go.
and get, get it up to about 20 again. few more things we didn't set up which I think it's gonna it's gonna slightly cover it in the future is the DVS system or the digitized voice announcer you got to program that for the routes and also you got to set your destination board up there which I believe we'll do on the way back into Hammersmith so again we can go up to 40 miles per hour right here I'm just gonna be doing 15 to 20 simply because we don't want to hit that next red light and if we're lucky by the time we get about three four hundred meters away it's going to turn green that way we can continue to do 20 miles per hour throughout most of the course of uh, going to Edgeware Road there we go it's going to speed up just a little bit graphics uh, are quite good for a simulator uh, controls are fairly easy once you get used to them. I do have a rail driver controller that if you've been watching my Train Simulator 2013 videos, you can you, or see me using the um, rail driver in the top left hand corner of your screen. Uh, I know this game does work with the rail driver to a certain extent, so I'll probably be making a few videos using the rail driver. But first and foremost, my plan is to go through all the missions one by one using the keyboard and mouse. Once I beat them, I'll probably go back and do a couple of the better missions using that rail driver. Go pass another C stock train here and going through the platform. If you see to our right here, we got good old Danny boy. I'm not sure what he's doing, why he's not trying to sit down somewhere like over there. He just wants to stand up right in the middle and block my view. I do commend his 90 shirt though. Again, it may feel like we're going a bit slow, taking our time from uh, place to place. But as I mentioned, just don't want to hit too many red lights along the way. I'm sure even doing about 20, we, sh we should be hitting one or two more red lights at some point. Another item on the way back, um, a bit confusing because it says it wants you to keep the schedule, which you can see the station monitor has your departure and arrival schedule. Problem is, we'll be way behind time by the time we get up there. And I'll kind of go over that again once we head on the way back, which pretty much we're just going to haul ass back once we get to that point. So you can see I just saw a yellow light change back to green, so we're already catching up to the train in front of us. And the red light up there at the end of the station. Go and start slowing down. Hopefully it'll turn green here shortly. Okay, so stuck at another red light, which is fine. I believe coming up is going to be a tunnel with a S curve where you kind of go down to the left and then up to the right. You can do about 30, but to me, 30 is kind of pushing it when you're going around that corner. I've only driven this route a couple times. 
So hopefully that's what's actually coming up. We'll find out here in a minute. Again, going to stick to about 20 miles per hour. The whistle sign, if you want to, you can hit the whistle right here. As far as I know, you don't have to hit the whistle when doing the uh, the missions or any routes in the game. So here we're going, going down left, and then we'll be going up right to what I call an S S curve. Going to speed up just a tad bit. Hear the rails just clinging on there. Anyways, feel free to subscribe if you're watching the video. Also, um, feel free to leave a comment about anything. If you think it's boring, then tell me it's fucking boring. Uh, if you like this game, like the video, like the commentary, I uh, would like to know that as well. Any feedback's good feedback, even if it's bad feedback. Alright, so we've got a red light in about 300 meters uh, next to the projects to your left here. Which, if you've ever been to London, it, it's really hard to say if the buildings around the train tracks are actually projects, as I think it just depends on the area. I wouldn't personally want to live right next to the tracks. I'm sure there's quite a bit of noise night and day. Um, but if you ever go through London or even right outside of London, there's nothing but houses, neighborhoods, and uh, apartment complexes lined up by the train tracks. Okay, so here's the uh, project light, as I call it. Red light right outside the projects, which are over there to our left. We can actually got some time to look out at these beautiful projects. And in reality, who knows, these are probably three, four hundred pound places to live at. Never know. So to look out, you can just hold the shift button, pointer, left click there, and you can look back when you're opening the doors. We've got a green light. Let's go ahead and close the door just by clicking on it and hit up to go forward. And you see the little speed limit signs. And there's also a whistle sign. I'll go ahead and hit it because I'm bored. And I believe the speed does drop to 20-25 up here. So we were outside for the most part and now we're starting to go into the tunnels up here. And the speed just dropped down to 25. We already got a red light coming up. There we go, got the green light there. Again, quite boring compared to running a route, picking up and dropping off passengers while trying to keep to a schedule. Uh, but again, we're, we are playing just a tutorial mission right now. And I'll give you some uh, time saving tips coming up once we get to Edgware Road and head back to Hammersmith. Still a red light up ahead, I'm trying to take my time before getting there. There we go, just change to green. Still gonna take my time because I know we're already catching up to the train in front of us.
do have a caution light up there and now it's back to green and it should go down to I think 20 miles per hour here there's that train to the left that we were following and we're going to be going straight on in train so again I have to do it the way this game wants me to do everything so I have to do it in order here I want to go ahead and switch off the headlights destination light dashboard light ventilation and then it wants me to do the tail lights turn them on so normally you turn off the cab light too along with doing those items over there. Anyways, wants to go over here and put the traction brake control controller, excuse me, down to emergency. Wait till the pressure dies off and then we got to move the selector switch to off. So you hit page down to go up. And then we're going to change this down to shut down by hitting the down button. So, that's it. Hit C to get up out of your seat. Go ahead and walk off the train. Let Danny's bald head get out of there. Now we gotta go to the first car on the other side. And I think it will let us open the door, but I don't think we can do anything until Danny gets in there. Yep, so I can open the door. Let me see if I can actually sit down yet. Okay, I can. If I can't do anything. Let's try turning these off. Nope, can't do anything until Danny gets in here. So let me wait till the good old bald guy gets up here. Come on, Danny boy. Should just lock him out. Is he coming or what? I don't even see him. Is that him walking all the way down there? I feel like he's stuck. Yeah, he definitely looks stuck. There you go. I think I just got him unstuck. I don't know how that happened. One of the fascinating glitches of this game. Typically when uh, passengers get stuck walking, if they run into somebody, they'll usually just disappear after a couple seconds. Um, but there is a glitch towards the end of the scenario too, which I'll show you when we get down there. And hopefully uh, I can show you because Danny's wasting his time, or taking his sweet ass time to get here. There he is, doing absolutely nothing. So we need to switch off the tail lights because we're in the front now. And wants us to go back to the traction brake controller, get that to emergency, then go back. Again, we're doing it the way it wants us to do it, not the way I would typically do it. Turn on the headlights, ventilation, dashboard, and destination lights. And now it wants us to switch on the passenger heating and lights, or just the heating, excuse me. And then now we're going to be doing the destination board, which we didn't do. We're going to be selecting circle line via outgate. go now it wants to set up the the DVS again we're doing it in the order it wants us to do it if you want to watch the next video I'll show you how to really set up the train as fast as possible and do it right so anyways on this this takes a while to learn especially if you're running your own route you got to figure out where you're going anyways program on this you can pretty much follow the instructions we need to go ahead and do the circle line inner rail and then hit enter we're leaving Edgeware Road Hammersmith. There you go, hit enter. And then now we gotta select Hammersmith as the arrival station, hit enter, and then enter again to finalize the programming. And to let passengers on, we're gonna hit the F6 button because the platform's on the right hand side. You gotta look back, make sure everything is alright. 
and then we'll close the door. Let me see if I can turn on the cab or the uh, cab lights there. Yep. There we go. Hit tab to bring that down. And go ahead and hit page up. Put it in the four position so we're moving forward. Let the pressure build up. We want to get the pressure to right around 80 right there. And did I close the doors? I think I did. Nope. I'm going to close the doors. Good thing I checked. Okay. And we're pretty much off. You can hit 1, 2, and 3 to bring up these items. Again, if you look at the station monitor, our departure time when we're supposed to depart by was 621. Well, as you look at the time, we're already at 643. It's impossible to meet the departure time. Luckily, um, you don't fail the mission every time. Otherwise, that would be a game-breaking bug. Uh, bug. I'm going to take the time departure schedule off. Only thing we're going to do is go basically full speed all the way back to Hammersmith. Do not stop at any of the stations on the way back unless you want to waste your time in practice. But you'll be getting plenty of practice on the next mission as well. Again, we'll be doing pretty close to the speed limit the entire time, so it's 25, we're doing 24 right now. I can always go up a mile per hour if I want to. And the announcement should say Paddington is next. And then, unfortunately, since we're just skipping all the stations, it's going to continuously say Paddington on the um, following stations. But, again, unless you want to waste your time and get some practice, then uh, you can just basically skip all the way down to Hammersmith and then I'll show you a glitch when we get down there hopefully if uh, Danny boy didn't make us take too long getting stuck on the train back there you're a bad bad bloke the next station is Paddington. if you're just joining us I was letting the announcement go, but if you're just joining us, again, you're watching the Middle Age Gamer, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and comment. Uh, good and bad comments are welcomed. I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you probably have some interest in simulation games, hopefully. If not, sorry, I don't know what to tell you. It's probably going to be pretty, pretty damn boring on your part. Okay, so we can go for you and we'll go ahead and pick it up a little bit here. The next station is Paddington. I gotta bring the, the speed down to 30 miles per hour here. There we go. And there's a whistle sign coming up. Which is that red sign right there going into that S curve I was talking about earlier. So down to the left and up to the right. You can see doing 28 is really making quite a bit of noise going around there. It's best to do about 25 miles per hour or so. Again, it keeps saying Paddington, but as you can see in the route monitor, the next station is what Westbourne Park. And it's because we're not stopping and opening the doors, closing the doors, so it's going to be stuck on the Paddington announcement. Alright, go back up to 40 miles per hour here. Another whistle sign. Again, as far as I know, you don't have to use the whistle unless you want to. I haven't been deducted on any uh, missions as of yet. As you can see, we're hauling pretty quickly here. The next station is Paddington. Change for the Bakerloo Line and National Rail Services. I 
And as far as frame rate, for some reason I only run about 28 to 30 frames per second. I have everything completely maxed out. Not sure why that is. My uh, computer is a bit overkill for the game. I got uh, two, I think they're 670 GTs or GTXs, one of those in SLI mode. And plenty of uh, RAM to run a game like this, but nonetheless, I'm only getting about 30 frames per second. And it does hiccup every now and then. Not sure if that's just the game programming and code or if it's actually something I need to be changing as far as settings wise. But regardless, still looks pretty good. Um, and it still looks pretty smooth as well, even at 30 frames a second. As you see, we're making pretty good time. Heading back right now. There's a whistle. If you want to hit the whistle, you can. And next station, Shepherd's Bush Market, in about 200 meters or so. It's a nice satellite dish systems there. And getting pretty close to Hammersmith right about now. Go ahead and put on the brakes quite hard here. And I believe the next, oh, got a green light there. All right, so the train in front of us is just pulling in. And this is where the uh, glitches that I was talking about. The train that's pulling in is actually pulling in to the uh, the station where there's a wall in front of it. <coughs> Excuse me. And the problem with that is, for the train to pull back out, it should be coming back towards us and switching the track instead of hitting us. And the problem is, what's going to happen here in the next two three minutes? It's just going to disappear like it was moving forward or just it's gonna basically get removed off the map the problem with that is that's not very realistic at all it should be coming back towards us switching tracks or come back towards us and then pulling back the other way to go down the rest of the track um, on Microsoft train simulator as far as I know the AI is pretty good that if it pulls into a station it's gonna to have to pull back out of it and it's gonna switch tracks appropriately so the only thing that I could have said to the developers would be you know, make sure that if a train pulls in front of you, it's actually pulling back out the right way. It's not just disappearing or running into a wall and and going off the screen. But anyways, feel free to keep your eye on that if you want to. Not a huge deal, not a game-breaking bug by any means, but it's just one of those small annoying bugs that I think could have been fixed fairly easy by the developers. What do you think about that, Danny? Yep. So I thought. I'll go ahead and keep an eye on that C stock train in front of us so you guys can see what I was talking about instead of messing around. There it goes. See, it just disappeared. And you'll see in a minute when we get down into the station that there's actually no way to even pull forward if it wanted to.
Again, pretty slow. Have to do 10 miles per hour right here. And if you look in front of us, what does that look like? Oh wow, it looks like a wall. So there's absolutely no way for that train to have gone forward, it just disappears. Not a huge deal, but just a bit strange. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this mission. I'm going to go ahead and put it in emergency. And I'm going to hit page down to bring that to off. And I'm just going to hit down again to shut down the train. Um, also may want to forgot to let off the passengers F5. There you go. It says congratulations you have completed or successfully completed the mission. Again I want to thank you guys for watching the Middle Age Gamer today. Feel free to comment and subscribe and then I will have uh, the second mission which is called Standby Man on YouTube shortly as well. Talk to you guys later.